Okay. So on the last example, ladies and gentlemen, what I have here is 12x squared minus 5x minus 2 um, divided by 4x squared minus 4x minus 3. Now, obviously, the first thing we want to do is to be able to determine, see if we can simplify, simplify, factor out any terms. But unfortunately, we cannot in this example. Um, so therefore, what we need to do is then go through our um, our factoring techniques. Now, I'm going to do these uh, the long one the long way, and then one the shorter way because obviously, get out of this the uh, obviously the important thing that we want to make sure that we're doing is um, factoring these. So therefore, we can see what can get canceled out. So on the first one, I'm going to factor this the long way. And basically, what we did last class, or what we did before, is we learned how to factor this using our AC method again. So again, you do the same thing. In this case, though, ladies and gentlemen. A is not 1. So when we do A times C, we have, we have 12 times 2, which is a negative 24. And we have B, which is negative 5. So again, we want to determine the factors that multiply to give us a negative 24 and a negative, um, negative, negative 24, but then add to give us negative 5. And you guys can figure those out. Are, let me do these different colors. Okay, so Jamie, if you have a question, I'll be more than happy to answer it. Do you understand A times C? Do you understand why I got that? 12 times negative 2 is negative 24. Negative 5 came from right there. Then all I'm doing is determining, does negative 8 times 3 give you negative 24? Yes. Does negative 8 plus 3 give you negative 5? Yes. So now there's two different ways that I showed you guys how to do this. The first way was to basically rewrite the problem 12x squared minus 8x plus 3x minus 2. So you could do it that way. The second thing you could do, Tiffany, was what we did was the box method. And if you guys remember the box method, basically what we did was we took our terms, we took our first term and our last term, and we put them in the box, 12x squared, negative 2. And then we took our new, new, new terms and we plugged them in the box as well negative 8x and positive 3x. So basically what I'm doing is I'm doing two terms at the exact same time. All right, Because I showed you guys both ways. Some of you guys liked one way more than the other. Now, on the first way, I'm sorry? Right, <laughs> shapes. Um, so the first thing that we did for this method was like the grouping, which again, I reviewed for you guys at the beginning of class period. You group the first two terms. You group the last two terms. And basically what you do is you say, what, do, what does those first two terms have in common? What can I factor out? And you could say the greatest common factor you can factor out is a 4x. 4x. When you factor out a 4x, you're left with 3x minus 2. Then I look over here, and I see there's nothing else I can factor out, right? So I can just factor out a positive 1. And when I factor out a positive 1, I'm left with 3x minus 2. Now you guys can see, like the example I showed you at the beginning of class, my two expressions have the 3x minus 2 in common. So now I can factor that out, which is 3x minus 2 times 4x plus 1. Okay. So now let's go to the other example. So that was one way. And if that way doesn't make sense, then hopefully you guys understand you can take these terms and you can write in a box. And the box method was doing the, getting the same answer, but now all you're doing is finding what the side lengths would be for that box. So obviously, two numbers that multiply to give you 12x squared could be, what could give us the area of 12x squared? 3. 3x and 4x, 6 and 2, whatever, right? But remember, whatever, whatever height we have for here also has to be the height for this, right? So what height should I use for 12x that's also going to be a good height for 3x? I should use 3x. So I should make this 3x and then this 4x. So now. Once, I've once I have identified this is 3x times 4x, 3x times what gives you 3x? Plus 1. 4x times what gives you negative 8x? Negative 2. And therefore, you guys can see that 3x minus 2 times 4x plus 1. It's the exact same. Do you guys see how these are the exact same answers? Just two different ways of getting it. You can use the box, or you can use the factoring technique. It doesn't really matter. Now. You can use, if you guys notice, though, that kind of took me a long time. Obviously, I was explaining it. But these problems can sometimes take a while. So the other way to do this is what we, what we start doing is like in our head. All right? And if you guys look at this, 
there's basic, you guys understand that when we factor this, you're going to get two binomials. So what I like to do sometimes is just write down what those two binomials could be. Remember, the first two terms that you multiply, 3x times 4x, is going to give you 12x. So my first two numbers are going to give me 4x squared. So it's either 2x times 2x or 4x times um, x. Would you guys agree those are the only two options that can give me my 4x squared? I'm now doing the bottom one. You guys agree? Then the other one has to be negative 3. So the only other numbers that can give me negative 3 is 1 times negative 3 or 3 times negative 1. And basically what you do is you just kind of plug them in. What you guys can do is just plug them in and see which one kind of works and which one does not. So you, what you do is to determine that, you multiply your middle and your last terms. So let's do this in our head. Negative 1 times 2x is negative 2x, right? 2x times 3 is 6x. So 6x plus negative 2x is 4x. We need to make this, though, a positive 4x, OK? So what about if I rewrote this? What about if I rewrote this as negative 3, positive 1? 2x times 3x is a negative 6x, plus 2x, it'd be 4x. Does everybody see that? Yeah. That works? That works. So therefore, my top factored form is 3x minus 2 times 4x plus 1 divided by 2x plus 1 divided by 2x minus 3. Unfortunately, though, ladies and gentlemen, in this example, I don't have anything I can delete out, right? So therefore, this would be your simplified form. But you would write in x cannot equal 1 half or negative 1 half. And x cannot equal positive 3 halves. I just set each of these equal to 0 and solved um, for you. Yeah. I just set them both equal to 0. So in this example, um, there's nothing you guys can simplify that is simplified.